Welcome back. We're looking at uh, the 2009 Mathematical Methods exam. This time we're looking at exam two and we're looking at one of the multiple choice items from section one. Now I should make a note here that uh, some students tend to feel that uh, section one is a fairly easy questions. They are generally quite easy questions and you could use your calculator of course for exam two. But here's one question that, uh, question 12, which was answered very well uh, if you have a look at the uh, statistics there that 61 percent of students got the correct answer which shows that it was quite quite easy to do but yet 40 percent didn't do so let's have a look how we could have done it so what is the question asking us well it's uh, it's saying to us a transformation some t it's transforming mapping this curve y sine x onto a curve with this equation. So we, we're given the final transformation. This is the final equation. We've got the initial equation. And now we want to know what is that transformation that's mapping sine x to this. So that's, and they've given us a few options. So th there's many ways you can solve these questions. And I, I'm looking at uh, uh, not necessarily the fastest way. So I should let you know that. That there are other ways and maybe uh, in the future I might show some shortcut ways but what I'm looking at is just the standard slow sluggard way where you could just go through it and see what happens so we start on the final image this is it we put in dashes on the, the y because that's the final image that's y dash 1 minus 3 sine 2 x dash plus p we are rearranging that so why are we doing that? So rearrange the equation to have it look like the original. And remember the original equation was y equals sine x. And so what's actually happening here? We'll just have a look at it. We take one here, minus one from here, minus one from there. And then we are dividing this by minus three. And there it is. Now, we are setting this as y. And we're setting this as x. Now we're expressing the y dash in terms of y and the x dash in terms of x. And this is what you get y dash is equal to minus 3y plus 1. So just put the 1 there. And this rearranging it, x dash is equal to this. Now this is our normal form for a transformation. So it's TXY, which is equal to something which we don't know. So that T is there, plus EF. And now comes this big leap. How, how in the world did we go from, there it is, minus 3Y plus 1, and X dash is X on 2. Well, what have we done here? Just have a look at this. It's X dash. Notice the minus pi 2, so it appears there. So this is, has the x and there's a the y, so this must be a half. How do I know that? Well, let's multiply this up using matrices. So it's a half times x, okay, then 0 times y plus minus pi 2. Yeah. So that will give us that. And then Remember, this was y dash is equal to minus 3y plus 1. That plus 1 will be there. So we need to know how are we going to get a minus 3. So 0, minus 3. And if you multiply this out, so you've got 0 times x and minus 3 times y plus 1 will give you that equation. Now, all you need to do is compare this with one of the multiple choice items, and which one is it? It's D. And that's your answer. Now, where was the difficulty here? Well, the difficulty here was not in rearranging it and going backwards, as it were, but the difficulty was once you got to this point here and you wanted to put it, you wanted to put it into this form here. And see, this is where you had to be careful. This was X dash, you had to have X dash here. And then you had y dash. So that doesn't help that I've got the y dash on the left and the x dash there. So, and then you notice that's minus pi 2. So that will be minus pi 2. And then you had to find the other ones. Now, could you 
could you have gone and just looked at the bottom part? Well, no, because they, they were sort of catering for that, minus pi and 2 and 1. And you could have. You could have just gone for that. And that would have given you the answer, because that's the only one that actually has minus pi and 2 and a 1. Then you could have got the, the answer. But you can't trust them. They, they can sort of rig it out and make it change form. And so it's good to be able to just multiply it out in the matrix and, and see it through. And, and you know now that the, the correct answer is D. So that's one of the ways we could have done it. So thank you for listening. Uh, we'll be posting some more videos in a short while.